So here you go, 1917 to 2024. I'm in the same spot where that photo was taken well over 100 years ago. Uh, this is Glenmont. This is Edison's home. Uh, my last video I did uh, was of his laboratory, which is just a few minutes down the road in West Orange. This is in a private area called Llewellyn Park. Uh, you can come up and tour the house. They unfortunately don't let, allow any photography of any kind, any videography or anything, so I can't really show you inside the house, but I'm going to show you around the grounds and show you how beautiful this place is, tell you a little bit about it. There's a garage here full of rare cars. Uh, I'm going to try to get in there and I'm going to try to show you the greenhouse here and more importantly than anything, they are buried here in the backyard. So I'm going to show you their graves and tell you about why they're buried here or how it came about that they're buried here. So Glenmont sits in the middle of a beautiful area called Llewellyn Park. And this house was built in the 1880s by Henry and Louise Petter. Mr. Petter was a successful businessman, but he was later found to be embezzling large amounts of money, which actually paid for the construction of Glenmont and the furnishings inside it. And that all came to a head in 1884 when he was caught and agreed to hand over ownership of Glenmont instead of facing jail time. So, long story short, this beautiful home was empty for quite a while, and um, meanwhile, Edison's first wife had passed away. He met Mina Miller. They married in 1886, and he purchased this home, fully furnished as a wedding present to his new wife. And... Uh, also worked out because his laboratory was just on the street. So they lived here together until 1931 when Edison passed away complications from diabetes. Now according to the tour guide everything you're seeing here is original. Even these tiles on the ground, all of the glass, in fact there's a lot of stained glass throughout this home and it's believed that it was installed by a local man named George Payne, oddly enough. Get it? Window pane? Before I show you their graves, uh, I wanted to show you this giant bird feeder here. This was um, enclosed for the weather. Multiple feeding stations. Mina was big on bird watching and this was a, a prime area for bird watching so she had all these in fact one of them was heated she had the switch by her bed her bed in her bedroom uh, where she could turn it on if, if she felt it was cold out that's kind of interesting uh, the more you look at this house you know the more you stand here and look at this house the more detail you'll see. Yeah, this atrium. This tiny little atrium. That's probably one of my favorite parts of this house. So this was the servant's entrance. I think this one, it's really not on the tour. Um, so, I mean, it's at this point, it's just a bunch of boxes and stuff, but this is where all the deliveries would be brought in. Ice and food. Possibly here, because I think this is actually the kitchen. So, all the food would have been brought in through here. And look at some of this rot. I mean, this is constant maintenance, constant upkeep. So, when they they're going to have to custom make this. I mean, not the biggest deal, but still, it's n nothing you can go to the store and buy. So their graves are over here. Now, originally when they both died, they were buried at the Rosedale Cemetery, not far from here. In fact, there is still a family plot there. But in 1963, when, when the kids had control of this house and his property, they wanted to bring their parents to be buried here on the property of the uh, Glenmont estate. 
So this is where they're buried. Yeah, so he died in 31 and she died in 47. Uh, I believe she lived here with her second husband once he passed away. So Edison actually died inside Glenmont in his bed, in the bedroom. And it's right up there. I believe it's on the second story. And um, the bed is still in there. Now they are very strict about photography here. You cannot video or take pictures or anything. But I did want to at least show the bed and show you uh, where he died. But if you are in the area ever, or if you live around the New Jersey area, it's definitely worth taking a tour of Glenmont because it's such an amazing house. I mean, it really is a spectacular tour. This garage was built in 1908 with Edison Portland cement, of course. Uh, the construction of his garage gave Thomas Edison experience in using concrete as a building material. Although it was built with conventional methods, Edison used the garage to help develop his own technique of constructing mass-produced poured concrete houses using iron molds. So in typical fashion with my luck, the garage is closed. Sometimes it's open. I think it's a little early in the season. I, I think they just reopened for the season. So unfortunately it is not open, but there are some pretty interesting cars in here. The plaque here says, the garage housed the family's gasoline and electric automobiles, including a 1922 Model T Ford, a gift from Henry Ford, in fact, and two Detroit electrics and a 1902 Locomobile, locomobile, a 1902 locomobile which Edison adapted to run on his own storage batteries. To care for these vehicles, the garage had a car wash, a gas pump, air compressor, battery charger, and a turntable to help park as many as 10 vehicles in here. Oh, that's cool, yeah, I guess it is a turntable. So you could park, you can move the cars around. So the chauffeur actually lived up on the second floor and my guess is he would also maintain the uh, all the cars in here. So coming up to the greenhouse, this was built in 1909 to replace a smaller one. Uh, it supplied the Edison household with potted plants and cut flowers year-round. The two-story potted shed, made of Edison Portland cement again, provided workspace on the first floor and gardener's quarters on the second floor. Although the garden and livestock provided some food for the Edisons, local grocers supplied most of the daily provisions. While merchants and restaurants from New York City furnished the delicacies for formal dinners. Yeah, so this would have been heated all year round. Probably not very efficient. The jungle now. Some of this building is now bathrooms, and I don't think you can go upstairs at all. But what you can see is very pretty.
This is that barn that's just behind the greenhouse. They use it now for, uh, you know, all the equipment for landscaping, weed whackers and everything in there. But I wanted to show you, I'm guessing, the, some original cat doors here. They would take care of any uh, unwanted rodents or pests. This is the front of the barn. Yeah, so this is where they kept all the, the horses and the sheep, cows. And then I wanted to show you this. That I believe this was once their pool that they filled in. This is just the uh, a little outdoor area to that greenhouse. Uh, you know, nothing really to see, but I always like to walk behind the buildings because you never know what's behind them sometimes. So anyway, that's the Glenmont Estate, Thomas Edison's home until he died. Pretty beautiful place, interesting to walk around. Hope you liked it. That concludes all my Edison videos for now, at least. I have been out to uh, Michigan to the Ford Museum out there, the Henry Ford Museum, they took, uh, he took all of the stuff from whatever was left from Menlo Park, his original laboratory, and uh, set it all up out there. I don't think the building is original. It's, I think it's made to look original, but all of the stuff inside certainly is. So if I ever get back out there, I'll make a video there. But uh, fascinating man. All right, I'm getting back on the road. See you in the next video.